just accessed Hardware is Forever, your source for the expert insights, ideas, and innovations you need to do more in the electronics manufacturing industry. From optimization to operations, join us as we put the pieces together for a better approach to manufacturing. Let's go. Welcome back to Hardware is Forever. I'm Chris Bentliff, and Jay Patel is the CEO at Amtech. Jay, we're continuing our discussion about HMLV, and you shared with us last time how you're starting to see some of the payoffs at Amtech, and I love when you share kind of these stories and, and anecdotes about what's happening and, and how it's going. But let's talk today about digital tools, which is my sweet spot. And I know you and I sometimes look in the same ways at digital tools in broad sense of optimization, but I'm really interested in how you're seeing this in through this lens and, and the impact that it's making. So why or how do digital tools come into this? Why is it important part of this, at least for you? Yeah, I think, you know, we're talking about high mix, low volume. So feedback, quick feedback is important. So we don't have the ability for the supervisor to collect all of the data and enter it in a spreadsheet and give a report on a weekly basis. Like, it's just not, we just don't have that capability. We don't have that time anymore because we're in a high mix environment. So why digitization matters is that we need information systems to that can collect data so then we can run reports and intelligence on it. And now more than ever, the whole digital landscape has changed with the level of automation and AI and tools that can help us make decisions with the data and set up systems to help us make decisions or make decisions for us with the data without us even, you know, being engaged in it. So I think I think the digital transformation is coming more and more. When you talk about like ERP, MRP systems, those are pretty established, but What's driving it more now is I think the IoT aspect of things and also the AI aspect of things when it comes to obtaining knowledge, extracting knowledge that is very, very hyper pertinent to you. Uh, you don't have to go uh, and get consultants and look at something that the industry does. You can use your data if you if you have collected it and managed it and stored it, the right data that you need properly, you can do wonders with that information now. And, you know, as far as Amtech goes, we're completely not there yet to be able to digitally, you know, get that data on a real-time basis. However, that is in our roadmap. I think, you know, we're kind of more of the Let's go out. Let's let's see what the common sense things. I think even good to great, it says, you know, technology is an accelerator, but you need your core processes established first. And we're going through that that phase of establishing the core processes. And then we're going to see how we can use data to leverage our core processes to make faster and better and more meaningful and impactful decisions. And that's a data collecting activity, like you're learning as you go. Is that the first step? It seems obvious you need a source of truth do we need to collect data and without it, the rest of the conversation can't happen? It's a little bit of both. Like there's benchmarking studies out there that will tell you, you know, this, this particular thing is like this, or, you know, we can, you should expect this much from here. Like there's benchmarks that you can always use that are industry best practices that are deemed acceptable. But then on top of that, I think you need to be able to take that data, digest it, see what's applicable and what's really, are you, can you do faster than that? Or does it take a little bit longer than that in your industry and your business mix and your customer mix? So getting that standard and then, and then getting the data to be able to back it up and then somehow extracting intelligence from that data is going to be very, very critical. When you mentioned AI, I was thinking how AI could help you. You can automate the process of feeding it, the data, and then the AI and I'm interested in how you are thinking about this, can give you an analysis of, of that data or, or make decisions, make recommendations for you to make decisions. But it could also be predictive. It could also say, if, if, if this, then that. Yeah. Are you using it that way or, or is that a way to use it? I think, I think it is a way. The, the ways to use it are infinite and everything is right until it's wrong. And right. I think, you know, um, you know, the landscape out there with AI and its capabilities is 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 so abundant, so abundant that you don't even know where to start. Like, have you ever been to a restaurant with like a hundred things on their menu? Like, you don't even know where to start. Like, you have no idea what to order, what to do. It's all good. Every single option is good. 
but you don't know which good to start at. And like AI is is like that. Like and and you know even the IoT devices are like that. Like everything is so good, but you don't even know where to start. Like and and I think that's that use case that you said in particular would be a great use use case. Even even digital twins. Like hey, I have my shop floor. These are the rates that my shop floor goes for. Here is a product. How long should it take? Mm-hmm. Okay, it takes this long. And then we get the data and actually run it. And it's there's differences in there. And then now that digital twin using AI can do the analysis of the deltas and tell you where you went wrong and what you needed to fix. I mean, like, sorry, consultants, like, look for a new gig. Like, seriously, it's it's gonna be a whole different world out there. But again, like for me, even in that use case, I don't even know how to start. Like, I don't even know how to start that. And I maybe I just gotta ask, you know, LLM how to do it. But like, those are the type of scenarios when it comes to digital transformation, you can implement for like $20 a month now. Like, it's crazy. It's like $30 a month, 20, 20 to $30 a month. Yeah, we're in magical times. AI is the cheesecake factory of digital transformation. Yeah. But you're interested. I mean, you're right. We've got a future state that we can all easily see where you could you could you could simulate some change you want to make, some tiny thing. And before trying it, before screwing anything up, you can, you know, quickly get results or see what could be. That's going to change everything. That's going to change the way that we approach the future. But for present tense right now, what especially if I'm not like super digitally savvy or there's people on my team that are, but I'm not, what are some steps that we can take to kind of start thinking about certainly data collection, but this whole idea of digitalization, what do you suggest we do first and next? I, I know data collection is the first step. So put, put things in data. And then I really don't know, like you can create benchmark studies and say, hey, here's this benchmark. You have access to all this data tell me what's right and what's wrong like it's all about it's all about using the data your own data and i i really don't know what that is i mean we talked about a couple of things is you know digital twins that help you do an analysis prior to actual production or do a postmortem after production is done you could implement erp mrp systems mes systems use iot use ai but you know it, i think I think the question is like not where do you start, where do you want to start? You can use it for anything. It's just it's it's a tool that can be used for anything. The question is where do you want to start using it? Where is your biggest pain point? Where is your biggest bang for your buck in using digital tools in HMLV? Because typically in HMLV, you got one shot to make money on it because that's going to hit the shop floor. So for for this, validating and doing a digital twin and validating your process has been developed properly will help you not create waste on the shop floor and uh, ensure that you make money at the end of the day. You don't make mistakes. You don't create waste. You know, and anything that can help you in that realm for HMLV is more of a preventative type of analysis prior to going to the shop floor that's where that's where that's where we're going to win you know that's where we're going to make a that's that's where i feel like we're going to make a big difference and i think your value stream map right can kind of point this out we've talked about it in the last episode we've talked about it a lot but if that's the thing and you said last time it's kind of common sense like yeah there's a process but what's holding you up if we can focus on that thing what's holding us up what's an obstacle we can kind of reverse engineer our technology or our tech stack, as you've called it before, or the, our digital approach just to solving that thing, which probably will open the door to lots of other things. Yeah, correct. And again, it starts with your tech stack and it starts with your core processes and whatever you want to start digitizing first or wherever the mo- you have the most amount of data, you start you start hitting that up. Why for you are the core processes something that you want to make sure are nailed down? I could probably assume this, but I'm 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 really interested in how you articulate you mentioned that we're getting that nailed down and then we're going to, you know, move on to the data thing. And, and I'm curious about that. I, and I said, that kind of creates an inevitability. Is that what you're trying to figure out with the core systems, the core processes? Yeah, I think the core processes, like, you know, there's a book out there, make your boat go faster. Like if you, the core processes allow everybody to be aligned on execution and 
keep everybody focused and keep everybody in check so that everybody knows what the person before them, what the step before them is and what the step after them is. So they understand where they, what their role is in the organization and how they add value to the organization. And, and those core processes help us mitigate a lot of these risks. So if we don't have those core processes that everybody's doing everything willy nilly. I mean, we talk about 5S, physical organization. The core processes are, you know, effort organization, mm. let's just say. You know, those are the type of things that we need to do to be able to do that, to be able to control that. So then we do, when we do have a digital transformation, we can bake that into our core processes. If we don't have the core processes, we can't bake it in anywhere. So it just becomes this tribal knowledge that's not codified in software or in core processes that that dies when, you know, those people move on to other jobs or different opportunities or eventually reti- retire. It's kind of like, I don't know if you heard of fog bank. It's kind of like fog bank. Like fog bank was a critical chemical required for atomic weapons. And now the atomic weapons are coming, you know, of age and they need to be remanufactured and nobody knows how to make fog bank. Mm. So, you know, that core process was not documented. So now they got to waste time figuring it out all over again. So the core processes are required for us to, again, have a single pointed focus on execution. And once we have that, then we can implement these different digital transformations so they become standardized and shared and leveraged across the entire organization. Jay Patel is the CEO at Amtech. I mean, really great stuff, Jay, really interesting stuff. And I I love how you're figuring this out sort of in real time, like we've been doing with all of this stuff. And then you can share anecdotally, like, here's where we are, here's what we're seeing or whatever. That's really valuable for those of us that are also working through it or thinking about it or whatever. Thanks, Jay. I'm looking forward to our next conversation about HMLV. Thanks for joining us. And a special thanks to our subscribers and followers. Consider becoming one today wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube. Hardware is Forever is designed, tested, engineered, and built by the manufacturing experts at Amtech. Learn more and let us help you envision your next project with a free design for manufacturing assessment at buildamtech.com slash DFM.